What's up, what's up, divas and divos? It's your girl April. So, you guys already know what time it is. Let me tell y'all something. First of all, first of all, I actually recorded a like a five minute video of like a pre video of real talk of me just braiding my hair right here and just talking. And my dumb ass didn't even have the microphone on. I'm like so pissed off because I was already doing a makeup tutorial and I didn't need the microphone on. And so, I figured I was just going to talk to you guys as I was finishing up putting on my wig you know what I'm saying and anyway it did not work out because I just realized that the microphone was not on and I'm about to check and make sure the battery is still good enough <laughs> Let me tell y'all, first of all, what I was saying in the video was really not that important, but it was just basically what I have been doing for the week, which is basically nothing. You know what I'm saying? I went to the doctor. Um, my primary care physician is recommending me to a dermatologist for the scar that is right here on my chest. Um, a lot of you guys know what happened to me. It's really nothing major. It was a tiny pimple, okay? A tiny ass pimple that has grown over the years, so keloids are really not supposed to grow they're supposed to flatten out and, and kind of like disappear over the years and I know this because I've had one on my leg and I've had them behind my ear and they're gone but it does take many many years like a decade okay whatever this is growing um, and it is really it does hurt at times and I'm just like tired of it I'm just I don't feel insecure but um it just it's growing and I know it's growing because it was a tiny like it wasn't even a tiny pimple it was like a pimple but it was like a little tiny heat bump size and has grown to be like this so my body is producing too much scar tissue but it's growing and it hurts at moments and a lot of people ask dumb ass fucking questions like on my video last week I can't really point out what video it is but by the time this video goes up hopefully I'll remember however I think that some bitches be so rude and you need to watch what the fuck you ask on a video did some dumb fuck ask on a video what is that scar on her chest like first of all what the fuck is you asking other people for you on my video you dumb fuck ask me just like i said to her you need to ask you need to ask me and there duh it's your answer it's a scar fuck is you so worried about where it came from how i got it is it going to make anybody's life any better to know exactly what the fuck happened to me i get dumb asses like is, did you have a trachea first of all a trachea is in your motherfucking throat and not over here second of all what happened what does it matter Stop being so rude. People, it's, you know what? A lot of people are so fucking nosy. I have never met so many nosy people in my life, like seriously, on YouTube, on the street, or social media. People be so nosy as to ask what the fuck is going on with your life. Like it's supposed to make their lives any less hectic or make it better. I really just don't understand. But you know, I'm the one here to let you fucking know. Mind your motherfucking neck. Like, mind your neck bitch because you really don't want to ask me the wrong motherfucking question i'm just saying i think i woke up on the side of the bed today where it's like nosiness is not going to be acceptable on my videos this week like seriously it's christmas time merry motherfucking christmas bitch do your christmas shopping and worry about the fuck you got for your people on your list don't worry about what the fuck is on my body okay and on top of that, it might be the fact that I had me a nice drink and I drank that shit the fuck up, okay? Either way, it doesn't even matter. It is what it is. But I do have on my old wig, which is the Kinky Straight Color Tint number 10. This is from Nubian Bar. You guys seen how I made it. It did not come like this, meaning the roots was not dark like this. That shit was all one solid color. And let me tell y'all something. First of all, I have not worn this wig in a while. And I'm going to tell y'all why because I really did love it so much and it was so much fuller than this and it was so much nappier and so much kinkier than this you know what I'm saying and then once I flat ironed it like the company suggested and asked and recommended for the second part video that shit did not come back the same like it never got kinky as kinky it just seems like it tangles sometimes and I still love it and love the color but a bitch don't have time to be bothered with the bullshit that's the reason why I don't be flat ironing my kinky straight units and I only just put a little bit of heat to them because of shit like this. This is why I don't, okay? Um, and as for the makeup look, I do have a makeup tutorial on this look. However, it's not going to be up by the time y'all see this because um, it just ain't. 
okay but it was all using one product which is Too Faced and I love that brand I'm not gonna on a scale of 1 to 10 how do I feel about them I'm gonna just say a number 7 I love them yes I like them a lot rather I like them a lot but yes, so anyway, um, I did try a new product out, which is the Got To Be Mind Blowing Iconic Power Express Dry Styling Spray. I tried this out because it was on clearance at Walgreens, like two, two and some change. I went there to see if I could find another bigger tube of the Got To Be Hair Gel Glue because I seem to like that for my edges, but this works just as good. I do have a smaller tube. Um... I don't have it on me right now. My daughter Tati has it. She seems to like it too. But I have like a whole mess of their stuff. Probably like 20 products under my bathroom sink that I have collected while I was living in New York. I ain't bought shit. Forgot to be since I've been living here except for this. So if you guys want to see a got to be hair collection, then let me know. Leave your comments below. I will be more than happy to show you all the other products they have besides that goddamn got to be styling gel glue. People fail to realize that shit's been out forever. I've used it in like forever videos ago on my prior channel. But anyway, yes, um, this is the only thing that I bought because I've seen this. Um, everything else I have, all the other shit, so it was like irrelevant. I think I get stuck on one product and then don't want to use it no more, like Aussie. I love Aussie. I don't know if I'm going to unstick myself from them because their hairspray is like phenomenal. But yeah, so anyway, I want to get on to this real talk. If you have a real talk message, email that you want to send me, go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line, real talk, so that way I know it is about real talk. If you want to change the subject's names in the video, please, or the email, please let me know. You know, her name was Sally and her name is Mary. Now, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Just say I already changed it. If you guys have been drinking like your girl or you need to get somewhere or you need to go Christmas shopping and you don't have a ride or you just don't want to drive, get yourself a free Uber and Lyft on me. I will post the information below for you guys. There is Uber and Lyft, which you can get free rides. And all you got to do is download that link or onto your mobile device below and you get yourself some free rides on your girl and also as well as that all my contact info is down but provided for you guys below as well so yes let's get into this real talk because there is one that i got last week that i wanted to do the very same day but of course real talk was over so Here we go. Hey, Diva. My name is Treasure. My story is a bit long. Bear with me, please. I am 34 years old and I have been married 13 years. I have before I have four beautiful daughters. My oldest is Zaniah, 14, Z Zaray, 12. Zamira 9 and Zamia 6. My husband and I have been going through it about our daughter Zaniah having a cell phone who is 14. I said I thought she should have one for emergency purposes only. He's 200% against it. He sent the phone my mother bought my daughter back to T-Mobile. My mother got it for her for receiving excellent grades. My daughter called my mother and she came over to our home and was livid. She told my husband, Tyrone, he had no right to send back the phone. She got the phone because my daughter is involved in after school activities and she needs to be able to contact me or her father. Keep in mind, it's very dark in front of my daughter's high school. I want to, I went to claim my daughter, I went to calm my daughter down and after that I went and lied across my bed and looked on the dresser and my husband left his iPhone unlocked and he received a text message from this girl Tamika and she said did you leave her needy ass yet I'm waiting with a new picture attachment he replies daddy is on his way to beat them guts my question is how should I go about handling this situation because I want to beat him within inches of his life please help me thank you so much treasure I changed her name 
First of all, let's talk about they got four daughters. One of them that is 14 who received a cell phone from her grandmother for getting excellent grades. And she does a lot of after school activities. So she does need the phone because how the fuck she's supposed to get in contact with somebody? I don't see anything wrong with the 14 year old having a phone because my daughter, John A, who is 14, also has a phone. She got one for her 13th birthday for the same reasons. <coughs> she does a lot of things after school and... I don't feel like you need to be asking somebody else to use their phone. I don't feel like you need to have to go all the way back inside the school to ask them. Why do I have a phone so where I can call you? Are you ready? How's it going? How's school? What you doing? Are you are you almost on your way home? Whatever the situation is, why did her father return the phone? What the fuck does it matter? You know what I'm saying? Why are you so petty as to send the phone back because she's 14? But yet on your phone, your iPhone, you got dirty bitches texting you talking about did you leave her needy ass yet? And sent a fucking naked get photo and this did this motherfucker return the message talk about daddy's on his way to beat them guts up now I don't know how I would have taken that I think a bitch like me would have just went the fuck off I would have went from zero to 360 like a frontal real motherfucking quick all the way the fuck around your ass okay and been bashing you upside your goddamn head then I first I first thing I would have done probably this is just my scenario first thing I would have done is take that bitch phone number down and say who the fuck is you and what the fuck is going on because first of all bitch you already know I exist because you text and talk about did you leave her needy ass yet okay who the fuck is you to be asking somebody did you leave her needy ass yet whoa how does she feel where does she have in her right mind state to ask a motherfucking question like that and to call me needy so obviously your husband treasure has been telling her things about you that may or may not be true either fucking way who the fuck is he to be even insinuating a conversation with a dirty bitch like that talking about you about to come over and beat somebody motherfucking guts up nigga I will bash you upside your head and your guts will be spilled all over the roadside curb like how fucking Spencer's was this past Sunday when Negan cut him the fuck open and had his guts splattered the fuck out. Okay, that's how we do shit. But we not the walking dead. We not about to go to jail for some sorry ass nigga. But what I would do, because we gonna handle this like true grown adults. Bitch, let me tell you something, Treasure. How the fuck revenge is best unknown, okay? Sometimes you don't have to speak to a nigga and let him know what the fuck is going on in your mind. Though it takes a lot of patience and a lot of restraint to hold back from going upside this bitch ass nigga head because um I'm sorry, but... <sighs> I think I would have went upside his goddamn zone piece to the white meat. He would have had to go upside to the fucking hospital. I would have been Negan from The Walking Dead. And I would have had that back that he calls Lucille. And I would have splattered his motherfucking brain matter all over the goddamn sidewalk. Like how he did fucking Abraham and Glenn in season 7 episode 1. Yes, that motherfucker would have been just like that. And though I hate to use that as a, um example... That's how the fuck you would have been. However, we're going to be adults and think about this rational. And sometimes revenge is best unknown. Now, in my state of mind, a bitch like me would probably either have your shit packed the fuck up waiting on roadside curb. I'm not even going to be petty and bleach or cut your shit up. Because for what? Karma is a motherfucker. And I don't need to even go there. But what I will do for you is I will change the motherfucking locks like a bitch has done already. And I will put your shit outside like a bitch has done already and it will be right there on the curbside waiting for you and if you wondering why nigga you can either have a fucking text message conversation with me but don't ring a motherfucking doorbell or better yet I will post a note to your shit and let you know you can tell that bitch that you, yes, you left my needy fucking ass. Or you could just say, you don't even have to call her, but let her know you left my needy ass. That's all there needs to be said, okay? I'm sorry, but if that's the case, ain't nobody gonna fight tooth and nail with a motherfucker. If he's already telling that bitch he about to go over there and beat it the fuck up, then let him beat it the fuck up. Beat your ass, boop, okay? Boop, kick your ass out the motherfucking door and we can be needy. Nigga, you could be needy now, okay? Or you could take it another step 
and you can just start doing shit on your own behind the scenes meaning go ahead and get yourself a divorce go ahead and start filing for your shit get your shit together start finding you a place for you and your four beautiful young ladies to live and when he least expects it move the fuck out now I wish you could do this before Christmas time because the holidays is the worst time to fuck with a motherfucker okay let his ass get all depressed and stressed the fuck out and wonder where his family is at OMG here's the thing if you can get to your mama's house who sent your daughter the cell phone, bitch, take your kids, pack your shit the fuck up, get your Christmas presents, whatever you done purchased for them girls, and if you done purchased something for his ass, bitch, please take it the fuck back, okay? Please take it the fuck back. And then leave him a note on the door. You can tell her that I left your needy ass. See you in court. Because really, what is he going to say? How is he going to combat that? I wish you would have took a screenshot of that shit or fucking just like screenshot of that shit and sent it to your phone, okay? Or some shit. I really, because a nigga would be so quick to fucking deny the shit. He could be humping right in front of you. You could have called him fucking a bitch and he'll be like, ah, uh, it wasn't me. Nah, you didn't see that. That wasn't me. Like, really, though? Or some real shit? When I read this message, this email, I was so pissed the fuck off. I was like, yo, April... <laughs> Um, we about to have a special for the week. It's going to be a real talk on motherfucking Thursday because this is when she sent this to me. And I was reading this as I was driving. And as I was driving, I was getting real pissed the fuck off because I could not believe that shit. It's one thing to cheat on your wife and you got four kids with her. However, it's another thing for a dirty bitch to send a fucking naked photo and be like, oh, um, when you leaving her ass, when you leaving her needy ass, there are, and you know what, I'm addressing it just like this. Y'all be some needy, fucking, dirty, trifling, ratchet bitches out there. And I don't mean this to all y'all, but y'all know who the fuck I'm talking to. So if y'all watching this shit, and y'all know y'all done fucked a bitch man, and y'all know she had a man, and y'all know this shit, and y'all done fucked him anyway because y'all still wanted him, then y'all some thirsty ass bitches. Niggas is thirsty, and bitches is thirsty just as well. And I'm sorry to say that shit, you know, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a lot of bitches that unsubscribe, and I can't get to my hundred thousand a subscriber mark that quick however I don't really give a fuck y'all be some thirsty nasty trifling dirty ratchet bitches out there who just don't give a fuck will text a nigga like this bitch did and be like when you leaving her th um, her needy ass like bitch uh, and then send a naked photo seems like you're the one that's needy bitch because you on on top of somebody else man trying to fuck with them talk about when you gonna leave her sending some fucking trifling ass naked photos of your dirty asses this is shit that's the reason why I don't fuck with bitches so Okay, this is the reason why, and this is probably not gonna get to be three fucking real talks, but this is the reason why I don't fuck with bitches because they dirty, they trifling, they needy. If I don't fuck with you, or I haven't fucked with you really like that in 2016, or you wasn't fucking with me like that in 2016, best believe, bitch, you ain't on my 2017 list. There's going to be a lot of bitches that is dismissed from my 2017 list, and that's for sure because of shit like this. Bitches be so thirsty and trifling, and it's so sad to say you supposed to band together and stick together as a woman but no you fucking busy texting motherfuckers talking about are you going to leave her needy ass when you leave her needy ass when you fucking know already this motherfucker got four daughters with her like you don't even give a fuck about his kids and how that's going to fucking disrupt their life especially now like bitches be killing me that's why I don't fuck with bitches and then when I do they do some trifling shit I be so quick and easy to cut their motherfucking throat because um listen I can't fuck with you. That's why I bitch don't got no friends now because I'll be quick to just leave you the fuck alone and don't have no fucking reason to tell you why. It's shit like this. But if it was me and I read some shit like that, best believe I'm about to go upside that nigga head and then I'm going to find out where that bitch live at and I'm going to go knock on her door because I've already done been there and done that shit. The bitch didn't text when you leave her needy ass. But she worked with my ex-husband at the hospital. This fat synthetic ponytail wearing bitch. Fat? Synthetic ponytail drawstring wearing bitch. Yes, okay. Did this bitch fucking keep following around him? Like, you know, like a puppy with a new owner. You know what I'm saying? You know he got a wife and kids at home. Did I have to make an appearance at the hospital where they worked at? And then this bitch tried to come out alive? <sighs> Did a bitch ring your motherfucking doorbell too? Like, uh, yeah, bitch. I know where the fuck you live. Me and my girl right here, we about to put it on you. That's the shit that I used to be on. But 
You know what I'm saying? Bitches be trying for it like that and they ask for it. They ask for that shit. Now you got grown ass women, grown ass supposedly women, fucking texting grown ass married men with four daughters talking about did you leave his needy, her needy ass yet. I wish a bitch fucking would, okay? That's why I don't have a man right now. Because I, the shit like this, I wish a bitch would, okay? I would challenge any motherfucking bitch to try to step to anything of mine. Because that would be the fucking day of reckoning. However, you know what? A lot of these thirsty bitches ain't worth your time spending in jail, especially away from your four daughters. So what I would do, honey boo boo child, it's time to make a new life and it's time to move the fuck on. I would surely be packing my shit up and getting all my ducks in a row behind his back because revenge is best served unfucking known, okay? And I would let that motherfucker know when it's time to leave and I've done left and got my shit the fuck out the door and leave a fucking post-it note. I'm not a fucking letter because he don't even deserve as much. Leave a post-it note on the motherfucking door. You can tell her I left your needy ass and just leave it like that, okay? You ain't got to put no explanation and change your motherfucking phone number, okay? Change it. Or better yet, block him from calling you, but don't block the text messages, but don't reply. Because you know what? All type of fucking evidence serves a purpose. And if this nigga want to fucking threaten you, and he want to leave fucking messages threatening you, then let him go ahead and use that shit against him. But me, personally, I some you know, sometimes our anger gets the best of us, and we just want to go outside somebody's dome piece, which is suitable. That shit makes a lot of motherfucking sense sometimes. But then again, it's like, you know what? I think about the long run of hurting you. I love to fucking seek revenge on somebody for the long run. Like, seriously. I Like, my past relationship that I just got rid of that nigga. You know what I'm saying? He talking shit about me, talking shit about Mumsy, looking like a fucking troll. And I'm not fucking exaggerating. The nigga looked like a troll, okay? The trolls were cuter than him. But okay, you want to talk about somebody, you punk ass bitch. Nobody likes you in Schenectady. You running from the law. That's why you wanted to live here in Arizona. Because you done fucking um, rat a tat 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 a tat tat a tail on niggas in New York. And that's why they looking for you. So you figure you can hide out in Arizona and use me. When you looking like a troll with a two inch they can't fuck for shit for two minutes laughing, talking about, oh, I'm fat, all kind of shit, but you living up in here, talking just major shit, okay, and I could have just blasted him and went upside his head, but <laughs> a bitch got you in the long run, did I get that motherfucker who was on federal probation escorted out of the state of Arizona, escorted back to New York, and his ass is in jail to this day. Talk shit if you want to and start some shit and disrupt my motherfucking life. Nigga, the popo will be over here, okay? And I will get you on a long-term note. So sometimes revenge is best unknown. That nigga did not know that shit was coming. Yeah, talk shit. Yeah, I'm going to act all sweet and innocent and then the cops is here for your motherfucking ass. Extraditing you out of state. I don't play that shit. So sometimes revenge that you can fucking make um, and do to a nigga that they don't know about is best no unknown, okay? That is the best revenge because that serves a purpose in the long term. Instead of going upside their head and then they apologizing and then y'all falling back in love or whatever the case may be, get that nigga where it really hurts so that way he can feel it. I'm pretty sure he doesn't want anything serious and I'm pretty sure that he is going to hurt losing his wife and four daughters over some miscellaneous pussy bitch, okay? That's what a lot of these bitches be out there, miscellaneous pussy bitches. Y'all be like them niggas that I be like, non-purpose motherfucking men, non-purpose men. There be some miscellaneous pussy bitches, okay? Miscellaneous pussy bitches. That's what the fuck they were. So, yes, me personally, I would just go ahead and fucking just get him where it's really gonna hurt. So that way, he know for the next go round, don't never fuck with a black woman or any woman for that matter and her kids talking about oh when you gonna leave that needy bitch I wish a bitch would oh my god OMG I wish a bitch would talk about needy we gonna find out how needy this motherfucker is now so yes let um treasure know what y'all would do I was just so mad when I read that shit as I was driving it was just like I could not wait till today so next one 
Hi April, I finally decided to share my issue on Real Talk. So I have a co-worker who drives me up a wall. I mean, she is so nosy it will piss you off. Like she can tell you why your mom hair fell out in 1962. No, good goodwill, her ass wasn't even there. Anyway, she mentions she mentions some businesses of mine and I snapped. Our boss tells me I should not have verbally assaulted her and I need to apologize. Absolutely not. Now I'm facing suspension for aggressive behavior. My question is, do you think she owed she owed an apology or should I stand my ground? P.S. The boss is very aware of, of her nosiness too. Thanks, boo. Okay, Bree. So first of all, here's the thing. How the fuck she know your business, okay? Because she, you just wrote in here, she mentioned some business of yours. How the fuck she know your business? Regardless of you told her or not, you told somebody in your motherfucking office your business, okay? Or it got leaked the fuck out. Either way, this bitch knows your business, okay? So here's the thing. Work is for work. Not for making friends and sitting around over tea and coffee talking about what the fuck goes on in your household. This is what I talk about. I go there to make a paycheck. I don't give a fuck about none of these bitches at work, um... Because that's just me. I've never been like that. When I used to work at my job for Dallas for over nine and a half years, them bitches, they would barely, really even, I would barely even be in the office. And when I did, a lot of people didn't like me because I didn't speak. I didn't even give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? That's just my opinion. I don't give a fuck. I'm here for the paper. I'm not here to be friends with y'all. And on top of that, I really don't like to have a lot of friends anyway. I'm a very anti-social person. People fail to realize that I'm very anti-social. I don't like you coming to my motherfucking house. I don't like you calling me too much. I don't like you texting me too much, sending me motherfucking emails and messages and shit like that. I'm just that type of person. And it's fucked up to say I'm still like that to this day. That's just me. I will fuck with you when I want to fuck with you. And if you don't want to fuck with me no more, then oh well, whatever, so be it. Okay? But anyway, work is for work. Now, you done verbally assaulted the bitch and let her have it. You either going to be suspended or not. Here's the thing. If you apologize to the bitch, are you still going to be suspended? You know what I'm saying? Because if you are still going to be suspended for apologizing to the bitch, then don't fucking apologize to her. Some things are better left just left the fuck alone. Now, if you're going to lose your job over this motherfucking bitch, then maybe you might have to stoop down. But I'm sorry. Here's my thing. I feel like I'm right that I'm motherfucking right and I stand my ground. I'm not about to lower my self-esteem and myself to nobody. Okay, regardless of the matter, if I feel like the bitch is nosy and she needs to be reckoned with, then that's just what the fuck I feel. I'm not about to apologize for being who the fuck I am. That's just me. There'll be a lot of nosy bitches. Just what I just fucking said about what the fuck is on my body parts. Okay, bitches be so nosy and it gets to a person after a while. It's like, you know what? Bitch, mind your motherfucking neck. Mind your business. Go sit down and have a spot. Now, me personally, I'm going to just take that suspension and go on motherfucking vacation and relax. And bitch, you're going to know for the next time. Because, however, if you apologize to the motherfucker, she's going to feel like it was okay to do that. Or she's going to feel like she got the upper hand. And then she's going to go ahead and be nosy up in your business again. I'm sorry, but I'm going to just have to take that suspension and I'm going to just enjoy my fucking vacation while I can. And a bitch going to know for the next time. Don't ask me no shit. Now, verbally abused. Did you threaten her? Did you say I'm going to beat the shit out of you or some shit like that? Or did you just let the bitch fucking have it and be like, look, you need to mind your motherfucker business. If that's what you said to her, then it's true. Mind your fucking business. I'm not about to apologize to you for no fucking shit that's right. And if y'all bitches at the job for it can't handle that shit, then I don't know what the fuck to tell y'all. But it is what it is. I'm sorry, but I don't apologize to nobody for being me. I've been told that I don't have no filter. I'm too blunt. I don't got no feelings for people. I don't care what I say. And it is what it is. That's just me being me. I'm not about to bite my tongue for nobody. And bitch, I'm not about to apologize to you for being fucking right and being nosy in my business. Maybe you should apologize for being up in my motherfucking business. However, like I always tell y'all bitches, work is for work. It ain't for bitches to be all nosy up in your shit. Wondering what the fuck is going on in your goddamn life. Don't go to work trying to make friends with nobody. Do what the fuck you came here to do, which is make that paper. And if you got a nosy bitch on your job talking about, oh, what the fuck is going on in people's life, what you need to do is tell them, listen, 
Don't put me in the middle of that. I don't want to be involved in it. I'm here to work. People don't like shit like that, but it's true, okay? And you can't get mad if I just hit you with the truth. And if I told you I don't want to be involved in that shit, you can't get mad. But here's one thing. Bitch, don't go sitting in the corner talking to Sally Mae about my motherfucking hair, my mother's hair, or none of my motherfucking business. Because you will get red before the end of the day, before 5 o'clock, 3 o'clock, whatever time the fuck y'all bitches get the fuck off. Don't sit around at the motherfucking break room table at lunchroom cafeteria talking shit about me all up in my business. Because I will be breathing on your motherfucking neck while your hair is standing the fuck up. Letting you know, bitch, you need to shut the fuck up and mind your business. And don't talk about mine to get that paper because that's what the fuck we here for. I'm just saying, a bitch like me already will let you have it. That's why I don't have no friends to this day, and I don't trust bitches. I had to cut some bitches the fuck off already, and the next bitch that want to get out of line should be cut the fuck off too. Okay? So, yes, I wouldn't apologize for that shit. For what? You was right. That bitch was wrong. Why do I feel like I'm, like, haven't been in focus in this video since it started? Like, seriously. Okay, you guys, so this is going to be the last one. And I must say, the young lady who sent me a picture of herself, I'm loving that pinkish, reddish hair. You are so pretty with those new lips. So, hey, April, I'm a really big fan of yours. I just turned 20, and I live in Alaska. I think that's what she said, because there's no A at the end. So I'm thinking that's what she said. I met a dude named Rico. He was from Chicago, near where... Chicago. Near we go hit it off right away, but a sideline, I was really good to him and I did not talk to nobody else, even though I know he was fucking the girl across the street and he also had a girl that he stayed with. Rico invited some of his friends now from Chicago and I ended up liking his friend Bob. So after Bob left, I ended up still talking to him. He gave me his number. About two weeks later, I moved him down to my house and we stayed together for a month or two. I went to ATL with my friend. Um, um, who I used to who used to be an escort. She was out there working. I was just chilling, but I know he did not trust me going out there with her. He said he had a bad she had a she was a bad influence. I left for a week with her. When I came back, Bob moved the moved the pack all his stuff and went back to Chicago and left me. He did not contact me for three days. He told me that we will live together and he and he was, I just had to find a place to move because he did not like the area I lived in. Or I, oh, okay. So basically he told her that they still, he still wanted to live with her, but he needed to, she needed to find a new area because he did not like the area that she lived in. Or, um, or she had to move to Chicago. After he blocked my number, he told me he was going to come back after two months. Just hoping he will come back into my life. The other day I went to Chicago and I took my friend. So everybody think we were out there es escorted. But really, I just wanted to see him. I felt like I needed closure. I don't understand why he would do that to me. And I loved him so much and would do anything for him. When I asked him why, he said, I couldn't trust you. And I feared for my life because he didn't live the different type of lifestyle than most people I understood. That I don't understand how he could do me so bad. If you love me so much, I could not even imagine hurting him or letting anything happen to him. When I got when I got to Chicago, I met up with him. We stayed in a hotel together and we talked. And since I left, we've been talking. And he keeps saying stuff is going to get back how it was before. But now I feel hurt because I could never do what he did to me. And it hurt even more because my trust was already fucked up. And he knew that I told him everything about me and my past. I trust him with everything. I want I want to be back with him. But I don't know if I can believe him to do the right thing. What should I do? Um, what you should do is, first of all, stop allowing niggas that you know for two weeks to move into your motherfucking house. Why the fuck would you do that? Second of all, I barely could understand everything in this email. I'm not trying to diss nobody. But she was all over the place with it. And I, I get it, though. I fucking get it. So, basically, she met the nigga through another nigga. Moved him in after two months. Was living with him. She went to Chicago with her friend who was an escort. 
her boo did not appreciate that shit. He didn't trust her. So by the time she was gone for that week, he wasn't there when she came back. He packed the shit up and left. Okay, went back to Chicago, blocked her, said that he couldn't live with her because of the area, didn't feel safe there, etc., etc. But claims he loves her, but she's still not understanding why he, you know, would do that to somebody that he loves so much, and they still not back together. And what the fuck should he should he do? What the fuck you should do is not move niggas in after you done met them like two weeks. I'm sorry, but a nigga ain't about to live with me if I don't know you. Two months, nigga, you need to be still living on your own. I'm sorry, but a bitch ain't that thirsty. I'm not about to move no nigga up in my shit after two weeks, two months, four months, six months. I don't know. I'm the type of bitch that need her space. This is the reason why niggas do shit to bitches, okay? Because they be so thirsty and so eager to be in a relationship with somebody. Bob, you was already fucking with his friend and then you fucking moved him to fucking after two weeks. What do you expect? That nigga don't love you. You was just a fucking miscellaneous piece of pussy to him. And he has somewhere to rest his head. He did not like the area. He did not like how shit was going. So he decided to pack his shit the fuck up and move out. Now, bitch, what you fucking need to do is move the fuck on and get it together. Stop moving niggas in after you done met them for two months, two weeks, whatever the fucking two scenario is and get to know them first. How about this? How about we get to know each other? Meaning, you get to know him, he get to know you, and in the midst of all that, bitch, get to know your motherfucking self and stop running around with your little escort friend because that shit is not making you look good. Two birds of a feather flock together is what the old saying is. However, that may not be true all the time. And if that's how your friend get her money, I'm not hating it, nor am I judging. Bitch, get that motherfucking money. But, don't don't be fucking moving niggas in after two weeks. She don't even know what their true agenda is. This nigga could be a fucking axe murderer, murderer, wanted drug dealer, wanted for fucking snitching and bitching or what type of shit. And then your motherfucking door get karate chopped the fuck in because you done moved somebody in who put a smile on your face and wet your pussy up and now you like, Ugh, and now your ass is fucked up and dead somewhere. Bitch, stop moving niggas in after two weeks, okay? That's the fucking problem. That's what you should fucking do. And on that note, I hope y'all bitches have a Merry fucking Christmas. Let these bitches know how y'all feel and what the scenario and what your opinion be. And on top of that, I love you guys. Stay diva and be delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all on a soon to come video.